Can we just take a second to talk about how subcultures that were born out of poverty, like grunge and punk, have now been commodified and gentrified to the extent that you've got kids now wanting to take part in the subculture, saying that they can't afford to look the part. Like, how fucked is that? Like, the reason, you know, flannel and baggy jeans and shit was so big in grunge was because it was affordable. That's what you could buy with, like, no money. That's why it was the look. The reason punk was so big on leather was because the fucking greaser subculture and bikey subculture had died out and so they could get second-hand leather jackets for cheap. And now you've got fucking, like, Dolls Kill and all these bourgeois brands fucking building off this image of counterculture, but not actually taking part in it, and it fucks me off to no end. Before I get rid of the police, what do you think of that, Al? This is my perfect victory! That's right! I win! <laughs> Black Lives Matter, Bikini Kill, Anti-Fascism, Protect Jewish Lives, and Pro-Choice. Anti-Capitalism, Communism, Punk's Not Dead, Anarcho-Communism, um, MCR, and Mental Illness Awareness. Feminism, Bi Pride, Flannel, Non-Binary Pride, and Against Me. Some star fabric, Dead Kennedys, A Cab, Pride, and Yin and Yang. And then on this pocket, I have an anarchy symbol. And on this one, I have an X. And then on the back, I just got some handprints, a monster symbol, American Idiot, Trans Rights or Human Rights, and more fabric. So yeah, those are my crest pants so far. I love them. <laughs> Stop. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Get my pretty name out of your mouth We are not the same with or without Don't talk about me like how you might know how I feel Top of the world, but your world isn't real <laughs> It wasn't ideal I'm sorry, 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 I'
Hey guys, so I got a couple requests on making a tutorial on how to make a battle vest, so I'm gonna do that now. So for starters is buying the actual vest. Normally I would say you should thrift your vests to avoid supporting big corporations, but since everything's closed, I would say you should go to Depop because they have a bunch of cheap vests. I got my vests off Depop. This is what it looked like before I fucked it up. <laughs> For patches, I made all the patches on my vest, and really all you need is like fabric and whiteout to make patches, but if you want to make them nicer, here's how. You can use any type of paper, but I like label paper because you can stick it directly to the fabric, which makes stenciling easier. Black denim, which you can get by cutting up old jeans. Paint and a paintbrush, and an X-Acto knife. I can make an in-depth tutorial on how I make my patches if that's something you guys want, but really all you need to do is find a design you like online, trace it onto the paper, cut it out with the X-Acto knife, and use it as a stencil. And I get that making patches can be hard, so if you'd rather buy them, some of my favorite places to do so are Etsy, CrustPunks.com, and Headline Records. I'm out of time for this video, but stay tuned for part two. Hey guys, as promised, here is the second part of my tutorial on making a battle vest. So in my part one, I mentioned a couple places where you could buy patches, and I completely encourage people to go find other stores to buy them out themselves, but one thing I will say is do not buy them from nuclear waste. I ordered a bunch of stuff from them a couple months ago, and it just never came. So yeah, for stitching, obviously you can just use a needle and thread. If you want thicker stitching or you just don't have thread, you can also use dental floss. Here's what dental floss looks like versus just like regular white thread. The style of stitch that most people use for patches is the whip stitch to keep the edges of the patch from fraying. There's a million tutorials on how to do it online. I will say though, if you don't know how to sew, practice on scrap fabric first. For studs, definitely go to studsandspikes.com. They sell all different types of studs for very cheap. The style of stud that most people use is English 77s, which they sell in all different sizes, but obviously I support using whatever type of stud you like. And for buttons, I pretty much get all my buttons from two different places. Krizzle 509 on Etsy for political buttons and Headline Records for band buttons. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Happy vest making. Hope this is helpful. You're going to start by bringing the needle up through the underside of the fabric like I did right here. And then pull the needle through. After you pull it through, you're going to push the needle just through your pants or whatever you're sewing your patch onto. And then pull it back through. That's going to create a little line like that. And then repeat that, go back under just the underside of the fabric as I did right here. Then pull it back through the second layer of fabric again. And then basically just continue to do that as you work your way around the patch. So yeah, pretty simple. Just basically continuously go up through the underside of the patch, over, and then back down into the bottom layer of fabric. And you're good.
feeling better, better than ever. Cause you're a brella, brella. Conceited with low self-esteem She's a teenage dream If you hate yourself So, I don't know the exact kind of boots I have. Um, I covered up the logo of what they were. I found these at Goodwill for $10. My size, they were steel toe work boots. They were all black, and, you know, I painted them, um, you know, red and white, mainly because of clown shoes. Uh, on the side, we have Hello H, you know, for Slayer. Uh, we got Curb Stomped and some weird stuff. On this side, we have, um, you know, a noose, a grave, a uh, stone, um, a coffin, and that's about it. These are all just spikes that fell off. We have the Malenko on that side. I guess nothing on this side, but I'm, there's spikes on the insides too. I'm going to be repainting this one green, um, that kind of green. I also own this kind of boot. It's um, a Wolverine. It's steel toe also. This one was a lot more expensive because we bought them brand new, but um, they're nice. Sometime this Christmas, I'll be getting a new pair of really heavy boots. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Now, Brad and Janet, what do you think of him? Well, I don't like men with too many muscles. <laughs> I didn't make him for you! You take those lemons, no sugar at all, and you squirt it right into our eyes. When life gives you lemons, you don't make lemonade, you use them to make girls cry. You take those lemons, no sugar at all, and you squirt it right into our eyes. When life gives you lemons, you don't make lemonade, you use them to make girls cry. You take those lemons, no sugar at all. Here is a tour of the pants. We have the Slayer belt buckle. We have doll head keychains, approximately five to be exact. It is storming outside. A little voodoo kind of doll thing. Um, an ICP patch I made. Another one I made. This is the Malenko, uh, hand painted. This is just a, an IT shirt I took, cut off, sewed on my pants, ignore the floor. Um, this is the front side. This is what everyone sees. This is a chain off a swing set that was on the ground. I'm like, I want that, so I took it. Backside is the same for the belt area. Here's this. Here's this. It says God hates us all with the bullet belt around the leg. That's the vest. Um, the patches are plain vision. As you can see. Hand painted dying fetus patch. Grotesque impalement. I have videos on all of my clothes. If you want to see specific clothing other than these two. I, I, I got overalls and another jacket. Oh, no.